tonight. If you begin reading at verse number seven. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Hallelujah. Amen. As you transition to first Peter, amen. Here the Bible says, but we have this treasure. Amen. You ought to underline that, highlight that. We have this treasure, this, this thing that is of value and importance in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. We can't take no credit for it. Amen. Glory to God. It's all God. Amen. First Peter chapter number two and verse number seven. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Hallelujah. Now, our focus uh, word in this text is the word precious. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. From these verses of scripture, Iman, we want to uh, speak to your hearts from the subject. What's in your wallet? Uh-oh. <laughs> Glory to God. What's in your wallet? That must have hit a nerve right there. <laughs> Uh, it's interesting because uh, on this week I received uh, an a email and uh, one of the saints had emailed me and said they had sent me uh, some money and it's called Google Wallet. And, and so I didn't pay too much attention to it, amen, so I you know, tried to go there and I said, I can't get my money. But... Uh, as I progress through my week, how many realize, as I oftentimes say, you have to be open to God. You have to be sensitive to God. Amen. Uh, and please don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Sometimes God talk crazy talk. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, crazy to us, but come on, come on. You know, very uh, uh, beneficial, if you will, for us. And and as I was going through the day, I just kept seeing this commercial. I, I've seen the commercial before. I'm sure you have, too, uh, where Samuel L. Jackson or uh, Jennifer Gardner would come on for uh, this particular card company. And at the end of each one of those commercials, they would say, what's in your wallet? Right. What's in your wallet? See, here's the thing I want you to take away from this, and that is... What's in your wallet is valuable. Mm -hmm. All right. What, what's in your wallet is precious. You ever, you ever had somebody say, oh, she's such a gem. Mm -hmm. She's a jewel. Mm -hmm. She's so precious. Mm -hmm. see, see that, you're seeing that that person has value. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 here, I, I want you to really go with me because you got to, uh, got to have your spiritual ears open. A wallet, by definition, is a bag for carrying miscellaneous objects, a folding pocketbook. I think only folks in the South said that. A folding pocketbook. Anybody heard pocketbook? Yeah. Glory to you from the South. <laughs> a folding pocket book with compartments for personal papers and usually unfold uh, money. A container that resembles a wallet, a flexible folding case fit for carrying items of value. That is a wallet. It's, it, it is a folding uh, piece whereby uh, valuables are put into it. If I were to ask everyone in here to stand up and to bend over and touch your toes, you are a wallet. 
Glory to God. Did you get that picture? Yes. Some of us are more uh, flexible than others. Amen. Some of us can just get to the knees. But if we were able to bend all the way over, you would look like a folded wallet. And within you Come on. is something all right. precious. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Something of value. Yeah. So the question today is, what's in your wallet? All right, all right, all right. All right. Peter further goes on to say that we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation, a peculiar people. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. We are a wallet of God, and in each and every one of us is something precious. All right, all right. But the Bible says we have this treasure... Mm -hmm. In earthen vessels. Come on. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 13, it gives some illustrations and some uh, insight into the kingdom of God. And in verse 44, it says, And again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hidden in a field. Uh huh. That which when a man find it, he hideth it, and for joy thereof. Go in and sell it all that he has to buy that field. That's what the Bible means when it says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why? Because God saw something precious yeah. in those wallets. Come on. The Bible says we have not been redeemed with, in, with corruptible things, but incorruptible. There's something about what's in the wallet. And here's what's going on, I believe. that See, we have taken what God has placed within us and we have not valued it, nor have we protected it. Come on. Adam bankrupt the family. Adam had within him the precious things of God. Mm -hmm. And he allowed the enemy to come in and to steal the valuables of the family and bankrupt the family. Mm -hmm. Now you see a picture of this in the Old Testament where the Bible says that, that Esau sold his birthright, the value. The things that were precious, he, he counted them of little uh, importance and he sold them to satisfy his belly. That's why the Bible says meat for the belly and the belly for meat. But God shall destroy both of them. Yeah. Why? Because you don't take what God has placed within the wallet as being valuable. Come on. There are many folks that leave their wallets laying around. Yeah. All right. Unguarded, unprotected. Let me hear, let me just throw this out right quick. I don't care if you are in the house of God. Primarily, I'm talking to the sisters because the brothers have their wallets in their pocket. Don't put your purse down. All right. Because within your purse are valuables. And anyone is subject to steal it. Come on. Mm, that's free. That's no charge for that. <laughs> What's in? Your wallet. What's in your wallet? The Bible says in the continuing in the book of Matthew, chapter number uh, 13, elect later, I think I'm down to verse number uh, 40, 45, verse 45 and verse 46. Come on. Again, the kingdom of heaven. He says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man uh -huh. seeking goodly pearls. Right. Who, when he have found one pearl of great price. He found one pearl of great price. What does he do? Went and sold all that he had and bought it. He went and sold everything he had and bought that one pearl of great price. Jesus paid everything. Come on. For you. Yeah. Because God consider you a pearl of great price. Mm -hmm. Stay with me. Stay with me. How many are familiar with birthstones? Mm -hmm. 
Birth stones. All right. Valuable. You know what? I, I, I did some checking and I found out that there's only two months that has three birth stones. And I'm so glad my month is one of them. Amen. June has three precious stones. It has the pearl, the alexandrite, and the moonstone. And the, and, 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 and the, and the, uh, the dictionary said that the Alexandrite is a very precious gem because it has the ability to change with the light. Mm. Mm. So within my wallet is three very precious gems. Oh, glory to God. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the other thing. Now watch this. Watch this. Within your wallet, I don't know what yours may be, but if you don't understand what's in there, then you will not protect it. Come on. What else is in the wallet? What else is in the wallet? Here's what's in the wallet. The gifts of the Spirit are in the wallet. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why the Bible said don't cast your pearls before swines. He said be careful of what's in your wallet. Amen. People are so, so careless with the gift. Many people have lost the gift. Because they did not value what was in the wallet. What else is in there? The fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit are in the wallet. And God expects you and I to protect what's in the wallet. All right. Because our Father didn't. Our Father did not consider what was in the wallet of value and he sold it for some food. That's why the Bible said man should not live by bread alone. Because we are subject to give in to the appetite of our flesh. Come on. What appeases the flesh. And we will not protect the valuables that are in the wallet. That's why Jesus has come to put back in the wallet what the enemy has stolen. Amen. Our father, our Adam, bankrupt the family, but I'm so glad that he had a brother All right. by the same name. <laughs> All right, come on. <laughs> he came to take back what the enemy has stolen. Come on. And put it back in the family. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Not just the gift of the Spirit, not just the fruit of the Spirit, but all of the wealth of the world. God is giving it back to the family of God to put back in the wallet. Come on. Yes. Come on. So what's in your wallet? Because some folks, some folks have empty wallets. Come on. Some folks have dust. <laughs> oh, I just hit a nerve. I just hit a nerve, mother. I just hit a nerve. Some folks got dust in the wallet. Come on. When there's dust in the wallet, you know what that speaks to? No use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. And also it speaks to the fact that there's nothing been in the wallet for a long time. <laughs> Glory to God. How many of y'all have pinched some dust out of your wallet? Don't, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> the pinch some dust out of the wallet. Because there has not been anything valuable in it for a long time. God has come to put back in your wallet things that are valuable. Adam didn't protect the wallet. But guess what? When Jesus put everything back in the wallet, it also comes with a protection plan. All right, come on. All right, come on. Hallelujah. See, Adam didn't have a protection plan. Adam didn't, Adam didn't take the protection plan. But now you have a protection plan. What's the protection plan? The blood of Jesus. All right. All right. Come on. Yeah. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus covers the wallet, and the enemy cannot break through the blood. Hallelujah. He can't get past the blood. The blood is a protection. Now the enemy can't have it. But you can't give it away. 
Come on. You can't give it away. So what's in your wallet? And here's something else you got to understand. What's in the wallet is for use. Come on. Some folks are sitting down on the gifts that God has put in the wallet. How do you know? Because the Bible said, quench not the spirit of God. Come on. What do you mean by quenching the spirit? Sitting down on God. Come on. Not using the gift that God has given you. What's in the wallet? To benefit not only you, but to benefit others. I'm so glad. Oh, thank you, what, 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 Minister Lewis. I'm going to talk about you right now. Minister Lewis almost sat down on the gift that was in the wallet. Come on. Because he was busy trying to get to the house of God. And there was somebody who needed something out of the wallet. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 This is not an indictment against him. This is an indictment against the whole church. Come on. You don't believe it. Look what the Bible says. A man fell up among thieves, and along came a priest, and along came a, a Levi, and they both passed by the man. What was in the water could have benefited the man. Yeah. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. But they were too busy trying to get to church. Yeah. Yeah. And they kept what they had in the wallet. Yes, Come on. Yes, Come on. Yes, What's in the wallet is not just for the wallet. Right. Yeah. yeah. Glory, glory. <laughs> That's good. It's for those who can benefit yeah. from what's in the wallet. So what's in your wallet? Another question. What are you doing with All right. what's in the wallet? Good question. Because right. some people are putting more in the wallet. Yeah. Mm. And the good man went in the wallet. Come on. See, it's like the man. The Bible says that he had a, he had a great harvest and, and, and he was in a quandary. He says, what shall I do? I'm going to tear down my barns. I'm going to be a bigger barn so I can put more yeah. stuff yeah. in my wallet. Come on. Yeah. Some folks have stuffed their wallet so much it can't even fold. All right. Rubber band around. <laughs> it's glory to God. Now see what he just said? That was me. I rubber band mine because it was so fat it would fall open. That wasn't money either. <laughs> glory to God. Get out of my wallet. <laughs> He could have been a blessing to a lot of people yeah. with what he had. But he wanted more. Come on. And that is the appetite of the church. They want more, 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 more. What's that? What? Come on. Come on. That's what happened to Eli. <laughs> he waxed fat <laughs> and fell over and died. Yes, yes, Jesus, Jesus. So what's in your wallet? Listen to the commercial. Because it's all about being able to do something with what's in the wallet. Because here's what God will do. The more you give, the more he gives to you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. keep on giving. That's yeah. Because it's really true. Yeah. You can't be God giving. Yeah. No matter what you do. No matter how hard you try. Come on. <laughs> Why? Because, because the Bible says, give and it shall, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shall be and give. And to your post, I'm a living witness because I was getting ready to leave church to at least uh, three times here at this church. And somebody walked up to me and shook my hand and shook something in my hand and said, Pastor, don't look at it yet. Just put it in your pocket. 
Glory to God. I wish they hadn't let me took it out and looked at it. Because I would have danced right there in front of them. Glory to God. Because when I looked at what they gave me, oh, happy day. Amen. Thank you. Why? Because, look, I'm not bragging on myself. I'm just simply saying, we are givers. Amen. We are givers. Amen. And you cannot give and God not give back to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So what's in your wallet? What's in your wallet? And Because some people, they don't know what's in the wallet. Mm. They make statements like this. I don't know what my gift is. You've been saved by 20 years now. You ought to know what's in the wallet by now. You, you ought to have some idea. Come on. What's in the wallet? After 20 years, I don't think God is silent about what he gave you in your wallet. Amen. Amen. Some folks will go almost their whole Christian life and do nothing. Mm -hmm. Jesus equated to this. The master had three servants. He gave one servant five, mm -hmm. one servant three, I believe, and one servant one. And he said, occupy till I return. Mm -hmm. The word occupy means Conduct business. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the master expected mm -hmm. to have an increase All right. mm -hmm. when he came back. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said two of them mm -hmm. did as the master said. Mm -hmm. The one that had five had ten. The one that had three, I believe he had five. Mm -hmm. The one that had one, the one talent that the master gave him, mm -hmm. he went and buried it. Right And there are many people that are burying the talent Come on. that God has given them. You ever heard this? Oh, child, I didn't know you could sing. You've been sitting down on this gift all this time. Oh, child, I didn't know you can. You were so creative. Ah, I'm just shy. I'm just, I'm just. I just don't want nobody to know. <laughs> well, God said, he called us out of darkness into this marvelous light that we may show forth his praise. Show what God has deposited within you. Because what's in you is not just for you. you. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible says we are fitly joined together. Joined together. Yes, sir. Every part yes, supplying that which is needed yes, for the edifying of the body yes, sir. in love. Yes, sir. So when there's someone who won't open their wallet mm -hmm. and give what they have, mm -hmm. you handicap the body. Come on. Mm -hmm. Talk to That's good. What's in your what's in your wallet? Here's what the man said. Here's what the man said. They had one. When the master came, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he says, Here's what you gave me. Mm -hmm. Unused. Mm. How many people in the body of Christ? Mm. When Jesus returned, they're gonna give him back what he gave, what he gave them Come on. to work with. Shiny. Ooh, it's shiny. Never been used. How many realize God is coming back for a people who are worn out? Come on. Hmm? Worn out. What is that? What's that saying? Leave it all on the field. Mm hmm. All on the field. Why? Because God wants to give you more. But God will not give you more if what you have 
is still in the wallet. Come on. Nice and pretty. Hallelujah. You know, you can tell some used money. Come on. The used money is the tattered money. Yeah. Huh? It's the faded money. Yeah. Huh? It's the torn money. Come on. It's the one that has writing all over it. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's money that has been somewhere. Yeah. Right. Right. There's some folks that's just like that. You've been somewhere. You've been used by the master. And he can say of you, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. All right. Why? Because you have emptied. Well, here's what the Bible says. Well, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Bible said Jesus emptied himself. Mm -hmm. He left it all on the field. Mm -hmm. He emptied himself. Can you set it up yourself? Can you say that you have emptied yourself of what God has put in you? Two things as I get ready to close. One, what's in your wallet. Two, is the wallet protected? What's in the wallet and is the wallet protected? How many of you have lost your wallet? In a physical sense. In a physical sense. How many of you have lost your wallet? I lost mine. This one particular time, I lost my. I. I, I well, let me just go and tell it myself. I'm not going to talk about that later today. I decided I was going to get me a man purse. <laughs> Brothers know what I'm talking about, right? Big one. Uh, yeah, with the strap. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got all those compartments in it. I mean, all the car, all the credit cards in there. Yeah. You know, all the golden money in there. You know, all of the uh, 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 connection cards, you know, the connection cards. Yeah. The business cards, all that. All that's in there. And, and that particular day, I think we were getting ready to go somewhere. I had about $300 in this, in my man purse. A man wallet. And I went to the store. And so I shop and get some stuff for the road, for going on the road. And I made the mistake because the thing kept moving. You know, you, you're walking, man, it just, I don't know how the sisters do it. You know, things just swing. <laughs> I got tired of the thing swinging, so I took it off and I put it in the top basket. You know how where some folks put their kids? Yeah. And I put it there, and I'm going through the store, and I'm trying to get all the stuff. Put it, go out to the car, take everything out but that. Oh. Left it right there. And, and, and when it's new, you, you, you don't, you, know, you forgot that you even had it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I go all the way home. An hour and a half, two hours later, oh. I reach for my man purse. <laughs> <laughs> and it was gone. Oh, you talking about panicking? Oh, 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 an hour and a half, two hours? Left in a shopping basket at a grocery store? I came off that hill. <laughs> that was one day I was praying, Lord, don't let the police be nowhere around. <laughs> I came flying down that heat. I was passing everything in my way. And I was just praying and speaking in tongues. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, my wallet going to be there. Oh, Lord, please let it be there. I'm going. I'm going. Oh, I get there. Now, go away. You know, I was being nice, too, because some folks leave the, the baskets in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, parking lot. Slot. Yeah. I pushed it to the cart holder. Yeah. I'm, I'm a good person. I'm pushing over there. Put it with the rest of them. I went there. I snatched them things out of me. I was pulling my door, trying to find my man purse. I couldn't find it. He was crying. 
I was crying. Real tears. $300? Yes, I was crying. Credit card? Oh, I was wailing. Because now I'm thinking, I got to cancel all these calls. Well, I, you know, I can't go on my trip. And my driver's license. I was speeding without a driver's license. I'm going to jail. But God. Hallelujah. Because of faithfulness. Because of being a giver. Come on. I didn't have to allow him to give for me. I'm a good giver. A young kid. That worked there, found my man purse, took it into the store, and gave it to his manager to hold for me. Yeah. I went up in there, I, I, oh, I, I wiped my tears out. I didn't see the crap. And I said, Look, I know you probably won't believe this, but I left my man purse. <laughs> I told him that too. <laughs> Kind of looked at me kind of strange, but I didn't care. I wanted my man purse. <laughs> and the next words out of his mouth was, describe it. <laughs> I'm like, what, you got a lot of them? <laughs> and sure enough, it was there. What I hope you heard me say was protect your wallet. All right. Protect it. Don't allow it to be jeopardized. Come on. What are you talking about? When we go to places we should not go. Okay. All right. When we do things we should not do. All right. Then you are not protecting the wallet. And the enemy will come in and steal, kill, and destroy. Come on. And leave you with an empty wallet. Because no thief wants the wallet. Come on. Want he wants it. the content of the wallet. Yeah. He'll throw the wallet away yeah. once he gets all the in all of the contents out of the wallet. That's what the devil will do to you. He don't need your flesh, honey. He wants what's on the inside because he wants what God wants. He understands that, that, that flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. He understands that no good thing dwells within the flesh. He understands that the flesh is not what he wants. Come on. It's not what God wants. God wants a treasure that's inside yeah. of the world. He wants what's inside the world. Once he gets everything out the wallet, he throws the wallet away. And there are many people on the wayside of life. Come on. Empty because the enemy has stolen everything God has Come on, come on, come on. Many folks, when they find out that the wallet is empty, commit suicide. I'm talking about saved folks. Come on. Look at Judas. The Bible says Judas was an apostle. Read your Bible. He was an apostle of God. He was a disciple of Jesus. He was one of the twelve. Yeah. Yeah. He also was a traitor and a thief. Which caused the wallet to be cast aside. Jesus. The devil took that wallet and hung it on a tree. After he sucked everything out of it. And even what he thought he was going to put in his pocket, <laughs> threw it back. <laughs> the Bible says that Esau, when he realized that he had given up what was precious, he cried and he wept and he asked his father, do you have another blessing for me? Do you have something left over for me? And the father had to say no. 
The father did give him a concessionary prize. But Jacob had gotten the, in, the, the contents that went into the wallet. And watch Jacob. Watch it. Jacob became very rich. Mm -hmm. Jacob's sons became rich. Yeah. Why? One thing about Jacob, Jacob protected the wallet. Yeah. So what's in your wallet? And some of us need to check our wallet. Because you ever had your wallet to be empty and you not know it? Come on. How many, have you ever went to the grocery store and you went to pay for something? I'm not talking about no plastic now. I'm talking about the day when you had to pay folks cash. Those days. And you go in your and you go in the wallet. Oh, where's my money? Where, where's my money? Only to realize your money be gone. Come on. <laughs> and sometimes somebody you knew went in your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody you knew went in your wallet and got your valuables because you didn't protect the wallet. You put it on the mantle. You put it in the closet. It got to the place. Man, I mean, I tell that one. Oh. You almost got away. We need an example. Oh, you out there leg leg. Oh, get out the bubble. Many years ago, when we were young, BC. <laughs> I was overseas serving our country. Oh, pastor, pastor. Oh. <laughs> That's about the Defending the homeland. <laughs> <laughs> Left my wallet um. with my lovely bride for life. <laughs> I didn't know no better. I get a phone call. I worked the midship, so I got off like 6 o'clock in the morning. First sergeant want to see you. Go see the first sergeant. The first sergeant said, you ain't got no money. Matter of fact, you owe some money. I said, what do you mean, first sergeant? He said, somebody is bouncing checks. We know it's not you. I left my wallet unprotected. My lovely bride for life, she thought, like any young person, as long as you have checks, you can write them. So she was just writing checks. Until there was no more money. Then they turn into rubber and start bouncing all over the place. I learned a lesson. Protect your wallet. It was an honest mistake. I didn't teach her. But I learned. A valuable lesson. Protect your wallet for the loved ones in your life. <laughs> now, whenever you hear about maybe I close, what's in your wallet? What's in your wallet?